Alibaba, AliExpress, basically the same company, they're coming for e-commerce brands and they're coming for the big dogs. They're coming for platforms as well. One that you might recognize, Timu. Yes, Alibaba just announced that they're going to be putting a lot of money and they are going to be pushing Chinese brands. They've actually said it in an article and I'm actually going to pull that up. Really what we need to do is understand what's happening here, but then also we need to understand how is this going to affect us? Is this going to affect us? I've got Chris here with me. Chris, what do you think of this? Well, this big news article that you actually brought to my attention, by the way, uh, I mean, 10 billion yuan. Is that how you say that? That's what we're going to go with. Uh, anybody who speaks Chinese can yell at us in the comments <laughs> and, and give us the pronunciation of that. But I'm going to go with Yuan. Uh, and what they're talking about here, Scott, you and I have been talking a lot recently about competition and about some of the things that are changing, especially for Etsy sellers. And everybody's yelling about Timu, right? Everybody's talking about, oh, Timu sells all these low price products. Timu's doing all of these different things. And we need to really worry about Timu. Well, it turns out, Scott, uh, it's not just Amazon, Etsy, the sellers on Amazon and Etsy who are worried about Timu. Uh, Alibaba, who you guys may better know if you if you haven't purchased large quantities of things uh, as AliExpress, right? Decided that Timu is such a threat to them that they are offering 10 billion yuan. And I, Scott, we should probably do the math here on the fly as to what that is in dollars to give people a subsidy to sell into overseas markets via Alibaba and AliExpress. So what are they doing? They're aggressively competing with 10 billion yuan to get a thousand new or existing Chinese brands to sign up for AliExpress with the, for lack of a better term, express intent of selling products into foreign markets. What foreign markets? Obviously the US and Europe, right? And this is a direct response to them feeling threatened by people like Timu. So one, I would say uh, it's probably worth feeling at least a little bit threatened by what's going on over at Timu if one of the largest e-commerce companies in the world is putting up a huge amount of money to entice sellers to use their platform to do the same thing that Timu has kind of gotten yelled at for and, and complained about for in foreign markets. But if they see this as a threat from PDD Holdings and Timu, then we need to pay attention to this as well because it means they are very seriously and very aggressively coming after that same portion of the market. So we now have uh, two wolves to watch out for, for lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like the way that you put that. Yeah, I mean, AliExpress, I mean, we've known about them for years and people have been using them to do drop shipping. Uh, and, you know, we used to use them years ago to, to test products to see how good they were before we had to buy a big batch. So it's, it's a, you know, it's the, uh, you know, the, the smaller company of Alibaba, it's their, it's their express model, if you will. Um, so Chris, from what I'm hearing then is it's going to, it's going to give an initial batch of a thousand Chinese brands and merchants who sign up for AliExpress. It's basically going to, going to be promoting at least a thousand Chinese brands. Accurate. That that's correct. Right. Yeah. And I just, I just did the math here really quickly. This is 1.4, Scott billion dollars. Oh my gosh. Uh, US dollars currently. I'm not going to do this in Colombian pesos, Mexican pesos, right? Y'all can uh Google translate that to whatever your local currency is. But 1.4 billion US dollars across a thousand different merchants. Scott, somebody can do the math for me in the comments here, but that's a buttload of money for each yeah. of those thousand merchants. And what they're doing is they're trying to subsidize the shipping time. And if you Watch what we talked about when we talked about Timu. One of the things that Timu was able to do is because order sizes on Timu are typically smaller, which is why Alibaba is doing this with AliExpress, they can use, uh, for lack of a better term, a shipping loophole, right, to get products into the US at a very inexpensive price very, very quickly. So what Alibaba appears to be trying to do here is putting up $1.4 billion uh, and also apparently hiring the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, if you scroll back up and look at that image. Uh, it looks just a little bit like him. Uh, <laughs> Where is that? If you scroll down, the guy that's holding the box there. Oh, here. Just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, the beard caught me there. But what they're trying to do is take advantage of that same loophole and encourage new people to join their platform to do the same thing. 
Yeah. You know, I think it's interesting because they they specifically say it right here, right? The latest AliExpress campaign shows how competition from a new generation of China founded online retailers, Timu and Shine in particular. And that, that's how you pronounce. Is that Shine? Is that the other platform? I've always heard it pronounced Shin. But Shin? Okay. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. Somebody correct uh, us in the comments. Give us the phonetics down below. Yeah, get, give us that. Um, but basically, they're raising the stakes for Alibaba's expansion efforts overseas. Okay. And I mean, so this is a big deal, right? And it, I mean, it's a big deal for, I guess it's a big deal for Timu, but Timu now, what are they going to do? Are they going to come back and start spending more? And I don't remember what the number was, Chris, but it was billions of dollars that they're spending right now to acquire customers so they could take out Amazon. That's what the word on the street was. Now we're saying Alibaba is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't forget about us. Like, we're the big dogs here, right? And I think, Scott, you I don't know where it is in the article, but I just saw it and it it reminded me. So AliExpress has what they call their five day shipping program. Yeah, and it's I saw specifically that, that if you buy something on AliExpress, you will get it into your hands in the US within five days. And what they're doing here is doubling, tripling, quadrupling down, 1.4 billioning down uh, to expand that program to more sellers and encourage more people to use it. So they are subsidizing this again. When we talked about this with Timu, we know that Timu, at least traditionally, has been losing money, like a substantial amount of money on each of their sales because they're subsidizing the shipping, they're subsidizing the products in order to gain that market share. Alibaba is now responding in kind by saying, hey, look, we're going to subsidize to the tune of $1.4 billion to try to get a little bit of that back. And I know uh, I would rather see the two of them fight it out and lose as much money as possible while we're you know, just over here doing our print on demand or our handmade thing on Etsy. But it is something we have to pay attention to because this is going to become more and more of a viable option. And a couple of years ago, Scott, AliExpress had a lot of the same comments that people have about Timu. When they started, they launched. Quality was not great. They didn't have a lot of repeat customers. I see more and more people going to AliExpress as, a, uh, as an alternative to an Amazon, to an Etsy. Because that quality has started to come up, they've realized that if they want to compete in the Western market, that quality needs to be a part of that. So this is something everybody, regardless of the platform that you're selling on, whether you're selling on Etsy, Amazon, your own Shopify store, this is something you need to pay attention to because the competition is coming. Yeah. And I, I just want to point this out. They're actually, they're calling it the campaign, right? The campaign called 10 billion yuan of subsidies. Right. That, that's what the, they've actually titled it. It's like, that's the mission. That's, that's. Yeah. So, so what they've done is fired their marketing team and put that budget towards these subsidies. Right. Uh, they're just calling it exactly what it is. It's 10 million in subsidies. We don't need to get fancy with it. We don't need to market it. You want some money. You want $1.4 billion in subsidies. Sign up, join the platform and send, send products to the U S send products to Korea, send products to Japan and send products to Europe. We'll give you the money to do it. Yeah. I, what I'd like to know in the comments here is how many of you have either purchased something off of AliExpress or purchased something off of Timu or how many of you have used AliExpress to buy products to resell, whether it's on Amazon, whether it's on Etsy, whether it's on eBay. I'm just curious. Uh, and I'll, I'll be straight up. Like I've never bought anything off of Timu, but I have purchased things off of AliExpress, but I did it. And this is going back probably eight, nine years ago. And I was doing it to test products that I was going to potentially be selling as private labeling. Uh, and that was on Amazon and that was years ago. Um, so I have had some experience with AliExpress, and I've purchased through Alibaba. I've actually found agents through that. Uh, but, uh, I've never purchased anything personally for myself. Um, but I'm just curious in the comments. And I'd also like to know, what do you think in the comments? Is this going to do to platforms like Amazon, Timu even, uh, Etsy, eBay. What do you think this is going to do with the news of all of these Chinese brands being supported by Ali Bahaba, a big giant with billions of dollars? I'm just curious in the comments. Let us know what you think. At the end of the day, I personally think this. We should, well, we should always be building our brand and, well, building assets that we have control over and we have to adapt. That's part of business. That's part of any business is really learning how to adapt and also just being aware of what's going around uh, around us or what's going on in the marketplace.